Hello, my name is Grant Griebel. I'm a sales engineer with the Sage Fixed Assets team. Today, I'm going to show you how to set up and execute the integration between Sage Fixed Assets Depreciation and Sage 300 ERP in order to take your GL entries after running depreciation and have them flow back into your ERP system. The first thing that you're going to have to do is go in to customize the fields within your depreciation solution and make sure that all of your GL accounts are matching back to the GL accounts that you've set up within Sage 300. If these GL account numbers are not matching to the one set up within the Sage 300 solution, this integration will not function correctly. So make sure that those numbers match first. Once you've ensured that your GL numbers match within both of your solutions, you're going to want to go ahead and run depreciation for the period in order to generate those GL entries. So let's do that now. We're going to go ahead and run depreciation on all of our assets and we're going to do it for a one month period. The system is going to go ahead and calculate depreciation and show us our depreciation expense report. In the process of calculating depreciation for that period, Sage Fixed Assets is also going to generate the appropriate GL entries for that period. Now that we're done running our depreciation, we can go ahead and get started executing the integration between the two pieces of software. To do that, we're going to come up here to our links dropdown. We're going to go to our depreciation links and choose Sage 300 ERP. In order to execute the integration, we're going to have to close the company that we currently have open. And now we can go ahead and set up some details in order to make this integration work. First, we need to choose the company that we want to pull the journal entries from. You can have multiple companies within your fixed asset solution, so make sure to choose the one that you just ran depreciation on. Next, we need to choose both the group, we're going to do all complete assets, and the book. We're going to pull our GL entries from our tax book. Next, we also need to make sure that our dates are matching the ones that we just ran depreciation on. And finally, we need to provide a reference number for this entry that we can identify on the Sage 300 ERP side in order to pull it through. Once we've reviewed the information and made sure that it's correct, we can click on Preview in order to take a quick look at what that expense is going to look like. So we can see that we've got our depreciation expense, accumulated depreciation, and the debits and credits that are associated. Once we've confirmed that this information is accurate and what we're looking to have passed over, we can go back into the fixed asset solution and see that the ability to post those entries is now highlighted. We will click that now. We have to go ahead and enter in some information for Sage 300. We're going to go ahead and just use the default username as admin. And we need to choose which company within Sage 300 we'd like these GL entries to go into. We're going to go with our sample company here can click OK. And now I need to choose both the source ledger, which is the GL, and the source type, which is a journal entry. Now I can click to send the information over into Sage 300 ERP. We'll get a quick notification letting us know that the information has found its way, and also letting us know the ID for the journal entry itself. So now we're going to go ahead and switch over to Sage 300. You can see we're looking at our general ledger and our GL transactions, and we're going to go right into the batch list here. As you can see, here's batch number 216, depreciation expense, and we'll go ahead and take a look at this in more detail. And now you can see, as we were looking at the information in the preview, matches both the debits and the total credits uh, for the posting that we've now pushed over into Sage 300. We can now go ahead and accept this into our GL within Sage 300, and we're all set. And if we need to go ahead and run this integration next month after we've run our depreciation, we would do the exact same process and just change the dates and give it a new GL reference number so we can identify them and pull them into the Sage 300 ERP system. 
I hope that this video explaining the way that you can integrate Sage 300 as well as fixed assets was helpful. If you do have any questions on how to set up the integration, please don't hesitate to reach out to us.